Okay, hello everybody. Uh, welcome to tonight's uh, conversation between Gary Clark Company and uh, myself and guests. Uh, I'm Stephanie Sir, I'm the Chief Executive of Nottingham Playhouse. It's wonderful to have so many of you here. Um, I'm just going to hand over to my co-panellists to introduce themselves, starting off with someone you may know, Mr Gary Clark. Hello everyone, I hope everyone can hear me all right. Yes, I'm on. Uh, so my name's Gary, for those of you that don't know me, and I am the Artistic Director of Gary Clark Company. And Catherine, can I come to you? Hi, yes, um, I'm Catherine. I was uh, one of Gary's pit women uh, when uh, Cole was last at the Playhouse a couple of years ago. Fantastic. And Roger? Hi, I'm Roger, and I was uh, one of the pit men in the Nottingham production of Wasteland. Fantastic. Now you're going to disappear till later, aren't you, you two? Yeah. Um, it's going to hand over to Freya Ruan, who's going to give us some housekeeping. Freya. Yes. Hi, everybody. And thank you for all joining us today for our In Conversation event. Um, so just a couple of housekeeping things. Um, if you could all just let me know that you can see and hear everybody on the group chat. So just put a yes or a hi. And that would be really, really great. Um, also, if you could all just make sure that you're on mute, I think you all will be anyway, but just to make sure there's no sound interference during the conversation, that would be perfect. Um, now, the conversation is essentially split into four sections, and um, after each section, uh, we'll have a question and answer moment. So um, please do use the question and answer box. Um, so if you have any thoughts or questions that you'd like me to kind of put forward to Stephanie or Gary, um, please do use that box and I'll be collating all of them and then putting them to Gary and Stephanie in those moments. So um, that's all from me, um, but I'm gonna turn off my um, video now and put myself on mute until the next question and answer session. Um, so yes, I hope that you will have a lovely conversation and a lovely evening evening. Thanks Freya. Gary, hi. So lovely to see you. I'm going to jump straight in here with um, tell us what's been happening in lockdown with GCC. Oh gosh, where do you start? Um, well we as a company were on the road with our newest production Wasteland which was a sequel to a piece that I made a few years ago called Co. Um, it's been doing really well as a production. We've been touring for about a year now to mid-scale theatres throughout, uh, throughout England and Scotland. And we were halfway through a tour when uh, COVID-19 happened. Literally, the company was up in Scotland and we were about to open. Um, and we just got a phone call saying, turn around, there's, you know, there's been an announcement, uh, lockdowns happened. We knew it was coming. Um, so me and my producer, Annabelle, and the company were preparing for the worst. And then, of course, it happened. Uh, so we lost the gig in Scotland and then one by one, um, the rest just kind of followed really, which was heartbreaking for me because the show was doing really well and we, it had really gained momentum and it was getting fantastic reviews. We were getting brilliant audiences in the theatres. Um, but, you know, we understood the seriousness of what was happening and we understood the bigger picture. So we just had to swallow it like we all did in every industry, not just in the in this country, but around the world. Um, so although it, although it was sad, you know, it, we, we understood it needed to happen. Um, so we lost seven of our venues. Um, yes, I know, uh, all mid scale and some venues we'd never been to before. Some were new and we were really excited about uh, going to those venues. Unfortunately, um, we didn't manage to, to get there. Um, but what happened was rather than us just kind of uh, sitting quietly, we, we as a company, we immediately kind of sprang into action and we knew that we had to do something. Uh, we're not a, an, an established kind of NPO company we don't have that infrastructure we're, we're a group of many many experienced freelancers uh, so we were aware that we were in quite a fragile position um, so we pulled together as a team uh, we approached the arts council and uh, spoke to them and, and fought hard for us to be able to pay our um, our freelancers to be able to pay our dancers and our production team and our management team and uh, thankfully and thanks to the arts council we were able to do that and, and um, honour all fees which you know we, we felt very very lucky to be able to do that um, and then I guess 
what we tried to do was to think about ways how as a company we could um, provide, you know, we, I felt like there was a real urgency um, or a need for, for artists and creatives to, um, to somehow try and contribute to essentially what was, a re what was a really, really dark time. So we all pulled together um, and we worked with Hans de Kretzer Associates in, uh, in London, who do a lot of our marketing and our website. And we developed something called uh, GCC Digital, which um, was a digital platform. And the content almost looked and replicated all of the stuff that we would have done on tour, but now it was all done through a digital medium. And it's something I've never done before. You know, I'm very much a live choreographer. You know, we, we tour, we go to theatres. Um, I create live performances. So for the first time, we, not just myself, but the whole team had to really think creatively about how are we going to try and be Gary Clark Company, but on a digital platform. And also we didn't want to rush this as well. We didn't just want to rush into it and start providing content that we didn't feel was strong enough or mm. robust enough or clear enough. Um, and again, with, you know, with the dancers, pr uh, production team, myself, we managed to create quite an intricate, lengthy timetable of activity, which we rolled out over all of our social media um, platforms on kind of Twitter and Facebook and YouTube and on our website. Um, and I guess for me as the choreographer, my aim was to just tr still try and reach our audiences, still try and reach our community participants, still try and reach the people that we would have reached if we were on the road. Um, and through a lot of trial and error, <laughs> uh, we managed uh, to pull together this, what I think is quite a, a brilliant programme that we ran for, for five weeks um, throughout, throughout lockdown. And kind of seeing the response that we got and the people that interacted with the content was really warming for me. It was, I felt, um, I felt proud that, that as a company we were, we were adding to something, you know, I think a lot of us felt useless a lot of the time, you know, when we, when we were locked, we were locked down. So to be able to provide still to communities and see people engage with what we were doing, um, it felt, it felt like something good had, had kind of come from something so terrible. And what, what form did that take? Are we going to show any of that, the digital stuff? Or is that later on? Uh, yeah, I think we can. Um, sorry, I'm just looking at my, my questions. Um, yeah, so Freya, if you're there, I'd just like to show everybody just a little snippet of GCC Digital, uh, which is here. So um, these are just a few photographs of some of our company dancers uh, delivering uh, various different sessions, which ranged from professional company class to uh, keep fit sessions, work, waistline workouts like yoga, voguing, break dancing. We had a whole range of activity. And it's fair to say that these were tailored uh, to fit all different kind of needs and abilities and body sizes and shapes and experiences. So we, we really tried to think about um, a wide range of people and make it as accessible as we could. Uh, we had things like this in conversations where I would talk to different people in the industry about making work and what motivates us to make work. Uh, you could learn sections from the show through our bite size events where you could learn repertoire. We had youth groups and youth companies that have that took full advantage of that and created their own digital content and have uploaded it onto the U Dance Festival. Uh, and then I also did my community warm up, which I used to lead uh, for the community casts before we went on stage. And, uh, and that was a really great moment as well to see that our community cast for Wasteland and Co were enjoying uh, that content. So that's just a little visual snippet of uh, the digital aspect of things. And, you know, I want to refer to that later. Fantastic. It's that we, uh, I have to point out that in all those shots, you were the person not dancing, Gary. I know, I did do a bit of dancing. I did try. I did. <laughs> I just remember seeing myself on the screen week by week, just getting a little bit, a little bit bigger every week. <laughs> so I kept thinking, stop going to the fridge, Gary. Stop going to the <laughs> yeah, that's the only exercise I've been getting walking to and from the fridge, really. I <laughs> know, I know, it's bad. It's what can you bad. do? Um, uh, going? Yeah, so I just, um, and also just in terms of what we, what also we did in lockdown was, um, 
you know, we were lucky enough to be able to speak to uh, Creative Scotland and, and Arts Council about um, paying our, our freelancers, but also then looking at repurposing some of the funds that we have left from the tour. You know, because we're, we're not a company, we couldn't apply for that big grant that you could to stabilise. Um, so we, we spoke to the Arts Council about redirecting some of the funds that we had left to look at about us kind of stabilising uh, between now and whatever's going to happen uh, in the future um, and look at our kind of company structure, which I think is really important because we're, we operate on such a big level yet we don't we're not an npo we don't have the luxury again of that so i think for us to be able to you know luckily to to be able to use that that money to put elsewhere to help us plan for the future in whatever shape or form that that's gonna that's gonna come in really fantastic the interesting thing about digital work is actually it is really satisfying isn't it the idea that i mean like you i'm i'm the, I'm the live experience that's why i work in theater it's all about the live experience but actually you can be live and digital at the same time and that's been a bit of a revelation i think yeah absolutely i mean i do have a fear that we're going to get too good at digital <laughs> and then where do, where does that leave the live element of it you know i'm always i i, I want to hold on to that as much as i as much as i can but i think it's been a real testament to our industry how quickly um we've all just adapted and managed to find ways of contributing and and dealing with this situation and i think us more than any other industry you know the creative industries are really good at that and i think i saw a lot on all platforms, how we were a strong union, if you were, during lockdown. You know, it was every every social media platform was was littered with art and creativity, and everyone took full advantage of that. And I think it's a real testament to the industry and something that I'm proud of us for as a collective. Yeah, I agree completely. Some really good stuff came out, and some absolute rubbish came out as well. But I think that's fine, isn't it? Because it is the right of art to fail as well as to succeed. So the idea it should all be perfect and polished because it's online doesn't make sense, does it? it did, and I think we're all learning, you know, remember that none of us were ready for this. It became a bit of a shock. And I think, so it's, we've all got used to, uh, now even just watching the news and people's internet fail, and we kind of forgive it now. Whereas in the past, we kind of would roll our eyes, but now we just accept it as part of the norm. Like we you know, we're looking into people's houses on a daily basis and it's just become part of, you know, how we are communicating at the minute. And I've stopped bothering to tidy up, as you can see. <laughs> <laughs> Got to be done. Um, Freya, do you have any questions from the audience for us? Hi, both. Yes, so um, we've got a question from Phil Lowe, and he was just um, kind of asking, I think, in terms of um, GCC Digital, Gary, um, how the process of including the pit women um, from coal and, you know, the, including pit men as well in, in those activities that you were doing. Yeah, good question. So when it first happened, I was thinking, you know, what, yeah, in what way can we still involve our community members? That was, that was the first question. Uh, with the Pitmen for Wasteland, we decided to create a video which you can find on YouTube. Um, it's a sing-along video where we've uh, put together um, songs from the show and each Pitman have sang along from home and we've put the words up on screen and there's a step-by-step -step singing instruction guide by the musical director, Steve Roberts. Um, so that's how we engaged with our pit men. We also would encourage them to take part in our community warm-ups and our um, bite size and wasteland workouts, which I know some of them did, and we've got some brilliant footage and photographs of, uh, of some of the guys doing Rob's break, break dance sessions and, and Jake's voguing sessions, which is just hilarious and brilliant and fantastic. Um, and we always let them know on our Facebook page, you know, we've kept really involved with our communities throughout. And uh, same with our pit women in coal. We've seen a lot of them throughout our conversations and our warm ups. Um, we're very, very much still in touch with our community casts. Um, they're very much become part of our DNA as a company. So they're always being updated with our activity. Um, and also part of the, the community cast is our brass bands as well. You know, we can't forget the amazing bands that we've worked with over the years. And uh, they've also been joining in in the digital aspects of it 
if anything else, just to keep fit and just to keep active during this time and to, to have a familiar face to connect to. And we were very personable with that. You know, we never shy away from having these relationships. Um, and it's always a real joy to see them day after day interact with uh, what we do as a company. So on many different platforms, we, uh, yeah, we interact with them. And moving forward, um, the next stage will be to look at more... Um, more creative opportunities to get them involved somehow in what we're doing and I'm really excited for me and the team to come up with um, to come up with that structure and that program which I'll talk about later but we'll be rolling out in the very near future. Yeah and um, so no more questions from anybody but um, for myself personally I was going to say what was kind of your kind of um, the most challenging aspect that you found going into digital from you know doing performances on stage and then how to transfer is there anything that you found most challenging in that I think weirdly one of the most challenging things is making sure that your delivery is professional and clear and um, you've got all of the practical things right you know that we did a lot of thorough thinking with the company about delivery making sure that we were using um, language and a tone of voice that was open to anyone and everyone because it was an open platform making sure that the content was relevant um, and accessible for for anyone to get involved and if some of the material wasn't accessible to give alternatives to say why not do it this way um, to even think about what we wear on camera to think about um, the perception and angles of cameras, making sure the internet's good, making sure there's no noise pollution. You know, just things like that, I think proved to be, uh, I wouldn't say challenging, but things that we really had to consider. And I think through a trial and error basis, we were then able to, um, to come up with a rhythm or a way of working or a way of speaking um, that we all felt more comfortable with. At the beginning, it was very, very alien because you're talking to a camera and you don't know who's listening or who's watching. So that was quite daunting, especially for the performers who are so used to live theater and interacting with live audiences. Suddenly they're alone. Um, but I think that, like with anything, we got better at it. And I've just seen across the industry, people are now getting into the swing of things. People are relaxing into the digital world. And th I think, I believe things are being delivered a lot more uh, clearer now. Yeah. And um, just a couple more questions as well to come through now. Um, so from Bridget, did you encounter any resistance to di digital engagement? So people, you know, not being as digitally savvy or, you know, not having access to that. Um, and how did you kind of overcome that or try and encourage people to, you know, take part in these um, digital engagements instead? Yeah, I think this is a really good point because I think because I work so much in communities or especially in communities with lower, you know, deprived area of uh, or areas, sorry, of low engagement. I'm aware that not everyone has the newest technology or not everyone's got the capacity or the money, the finances to be able to have access to this. And I think that's one of the problems about going digital is is access to technology. Um, and not only that, we also found that you know, there was a certain age bracket that, you know, my mum's age bracket who just went, you know, I don't understand how to use technology to be able to access this. So I do think um, there is a whole conversation around that as well, about how people can um, get tech savvy in these times, especially now if we're having to move into digital areas. It's like, how can we provide support and help for people to understand technology that might never have had to have done before? Um, and even my, I'm not tech savvy and I've had to learn really quickly um, and I'm still on bit, you know, level one. <laughs> um, so I think, yeah, there's a whole, I think there's a question around that and we, I was really aware of it. Um, I guess there's nothing, you know, there's nothing we could have done as a company other than just send out messages telling people that we were available and ready on all of these platforms and to try and find a way of how to get in touch with us to get access to us and i know a lot of people a lot of our community cast members uh, did it via other family members who were able to to get them on yeah 
That sounds, yeah, definitely. And um, just, I think a lot of people on here as well are kind of mentioning, you know, they're really interested in that community element, obviously. And um, Sarah Cooper's just saying that, you know, um, how community and like co-creation with the community, and that's something that you've definitely done with the pit men and the video that we created digitally and everything like that. And is that something that you'd look forward to do in the future as well with GCC Digital? Yeah, I've got, you know, I've got, we've got lots of plans, which um, again, we'll talk about at the end of the, the conversation, but uh, yeah, moving forward, we've got big plans of how to involve our community casts from Cole and Wasteland, both pit men, pit women and our bands, uh, as well as people that we've met along the way on our road shows. Um, so yeah, there's, there's some good planning going to be happening. So watch this space. And so we've got a few more questions now, but I'm happy if you guys want to move on, we can bring them back at the end. Okay, lovely. Thanks ever so much, Freya. So, Gary, moving on to relationships, really. Um, and obviously, we've been working with you for a while. So just looking at, you know, relationships are incredibly important, aren't they, between artists and venues. But thinking back to when our relationship between Nottingham Playhouse and Gary Clark Company first started, which is a while ago, isn't it now? Gosh, how long is it now? Five years? No, more than that. Six years. Six, yeah. Well, it was obviously, it was, it was about a year before Cole, wasn't it? Yes, it was. So that would have been about six years ago now. I should yeah. know my dates really, but it feels, yeah, it all majors into <laughs> one. Yeah, and I guess this is an area that I really wanted to talk about, especially now in this current climate, is how artists and theatres work together. Um, and I guess I've had a really good, well, it feels like a really good solid relationship with Nottingham Playhouse since the, since I kind of jumped from small scale to mid scale, you know, that you were very much part of that journey with me and Annabelle Dunbar. Um, mm. For those of you that don't know, Annabelle Dunbar is my producer and we've been working together for a very, very long time. And she's an amazing woman um, and ran Danceworks UK in Sheffield for, I believe, that's part of 17 years. Um, and she was part of dance touring partnership and I feel very lucky to have her support me. I don't know where I would be without mm -hmm. Annabelle. Um, so I know that you and Annabelle knew each other before my work kind of went on to the mid scale, but um, I guess I'd started to, to work in Nottingham a bit before that with Dance4. I was starting to build a relationship with, with Dance4 and, and Paul Russ and the whole team there and doing a lot of work on their CAP programs and various different um, schemes and, and different uh, things they sent me away to Vienna for an artist retreat and you know we had we had a good relationship uh, with Dance4 um, and then obviously when we started to look at Cole we uh, we approached Dance4 to help support that which they very kindly did um, and then Nottingham Playhouse came on board and it was an amazing time actually because I think we're in a moment of crisis and I remember Annabelle giving you know you guys a ring and, and you were very very supportive of the the work that I was doing and was really keen to support um the journey of that and I and I as I remember I believe that you felt like the production call had a real place in Nottingham and Absolutely. with and with that theatre. And I guess one of the first things I want to say is that what we look for as a company, as Gary Clark Company, is to try and build these relationships. We're not interested in just turning up at a theatre, putting a show on and then leaving. For us, it's really about that relationship and that trust and building that language together. So we have a longevity and we have a future. And I think that the relationship between us and Nottingham Playhouse and Dance4 is a real testament of that. I think, you know, what we've been through and how we interact and how we collaborate, I think it feels really positive. And that comes from both sides, I think, Stephanie. You know, it's not just about a theatre understanding at work, but it's also about us as a company understanding what a theatre does and what you're about as a theatre and why you programme what you programme and how that sit, how our work sits with the, the overall programming of the theatre and how mm. that connects to each area. And because, of, because our work is very much about people and place and community, you know, we're really aware of where we go and why we go there and, and the impacts that we make in those areas. Yeah. Um, the thing with Cole, I mean, I remember, the, I remember our first meeting really well. And um, I think the thing with Cole is obviously a show about Cole, about miners in, in Nottingham is, is going to be, a, you know, automatically relevant, automatically of interest. 
I think the other thing is I'm, I'm wondering how choreographers who don't have those bridges in get in, you know, and I should have the answer to that. And of course I don't. So yes, I mean, I've been working with Annabelle's dance touring partnership was founded about 19 years ago, I guess. And we were a founder member, mm -hmm. but I'm just thinking that you had, we had those bridges, didn't we? So there was, uh, and it's worked out absolutely brilliantly and I'm very glad we did. Mm -hmm. um, so there was the, the subject matter of Cole, there was the relationship with Annabelle, there was the relationship with Dance4. Mm -hmm. It's just important that you have all those different ways in, in a sense, don't you? So that, so that before you even get to talking about how you're going to commission it, how you're going to rehearse it, how it's going to feel, that, that you get part of the conversation. And I, I suppose it's a concern, a slight concern. I don't know. How, how do you get to be Gary Clark Company? How, how does someone coming in now get to make those relationships? Is it all about the, re is it all about the relevance? Well, for personally, um, I, you know, I'm someone that makes work, again, about both political and social history, which I think resonates with regional theatres. You know, it's about people and it's about communities. And we're always striving to get new audiences into theatres. We're always striving to pack our theatres out, you know, to make theatre accessible. And I think one thing that we try and celebrate at Gary Clark Company is the accessibility of our work and that it feels mm. relevant. And not only what's on stage, but the wraparound activity as well. We, we, we put a big focus on our education work, um, our community kind of outreach work, our road shows, you know, where I go out and meet people in communities. Um, and I think it's also about stretching past just the immediate um, area of the theatre and going right out. You know, I remember when we came to Nottingham, we went right out into the coal fields in some real areas of low engagement. Yeah. You know? and, and I'm really passionate about trying to bring those people into theatres rather than the other way around. You know, we always assume that we should take art into those places where I, I'm always really keen to try and bring people from those areas into theatres and for them to experience something that they've never experienced before. You know, like we've got some amazing st statistics, you know, where we are pulling in over 50% of new attenders on some yeah. in venues. And, but I do think that's about the work. So I think for people that don't necessarily have the bridge, I think it's about the work that you create and making it relevant um, and making it feel like it, it's important somehow and it's adding to something. You know, I don't, I don't make art for art's sake. I believe I have a responsibility as an artist to educate and entertain and question and put uh, things in front of people that, um, that I feel really strongly about and that might have shaped humanity or shaped society, which we can all relate to. Um, yeah. I, and I think that's where the pull is for theatres with my work. I think, you know, that's, we always think, feel that that's a real positive thing is the subject matters that we deal with and how we deal with it and the way we talk about it and the way we deliver it, you know, it's very much a part of my DNA. It, it, you know, I, I feel very strongly about it. So talking of your DNA, I mean, that brings us quite neatly onto why coal, why wasteland, you know, why those two for you as an artist? I feel because I felt like I was seeing a lot of work. Um, I was seeing a lot of dance work, which wasn't really tackling any political working class subject matters. And I'm from a working class mining village and I feel very strongly about that and I'm really proud to represent that. But I felt it was really misrepresented in the, in the industry. Um, and I felt like I could fill that gap. I felt like I wanted to create a piece of work which celebrated the working classes and working class culture, especially in the North and in Yorkshire. Um, so I set off on a quest to make coal. Um, and it's a way, it was almost looking back at my upbringing as well. And I, was, I always felt rather odd in contemporary dance because I'd not been to ballet since I was three. I didn't carry the same kind of um, physical language. I didn't carry the right kind of language. Um, <laughs> I talked very different, you know, I was from a whole different class. So I was always aware there was something different. Um, and then I started to embrace that as I got older, which brought me onto coal. And I thought, right, this is going to be a celebration, not only of the coal fields, but of the working classes and as of me as an artist, a working class artist, um, which is quite interesting because I've been seeing a lot of tweets recently and a lot of social media about, you know, the, the, the title working class artist is really coming through now. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's where it all comes from. And uh, coal was such a hit and we did such an amazing thing with Cole. I was so proud of what 
me and Annabelle and the team did, it was wonderful. And we changed a lot of lives through our work there. Um, and it, I just felt like it, it needed a sequel. So then we created Wasteland, which looked like life after the minor strike. Um, and the model that we had with coal was, it worked so well. It was a real well-machined, uh, well-oiled machine, which we worked on incredibly hard. So it felt like we wanted to almost replicate that same model in Wasteland. You know, the old saying is, if it's not broke, why fix it? Um, so we tried to just almost see if that could, that you know, that model could carry through and it did, you know, and we, uh, we're, well, we were on the road with, with Wasteland before it was stopped. So it's all about my working class roots and trying to shine a light on injustice and working class culture and education as well, to educate maybe a younger generation that might not have known life before the iPhone. <coughs> How do you, so it, is, it does come from your lived experience, but how do you, it's quite a technical question, but how do you get it from your lived experience into a piece of choreography, into a piece of dance? At which point does it leave your head? And Yeah, well, I think something that I'm always looking for is truth. So whenever I make a work, I try not to um, fabricate things too much or try and not make it up. It all has got to come from a real source. Um, so the first thing I do is I, I bring it straight out of myself and I go and interview people and I speak to them about their experiences. I get right into the flesh and blood of the people who were affected by the subject matters that I'm dealing with. Um, so I immediately share it. I, it immediately goes from me into the community and along that journey, which can last for about six months, I meet some amazing people. Um, and again, from that point, we start to build up our communities uh, and they tell me stories and they give me endless, endless things to think about and questions. And that starts to build up um, into like a backbone, as I call it, or, or information to then help fuel the, the show. But because it's all autobiographical, it comes from me, I understand it. Um, I, you know, it's very innate within me. So I'm able to tap into it and respond very, very quickly. Um, but it's, it's tough as well. You know, I go through a real hard time when I make work this close to the bone, which I'm very passionate about. And I believe has got to be done well. You know, when you deal with social history or political history, there has, there's gotta be a level of research and a level of attachment that is thorough. And I'm always striving to be thorough and truthful and um, professional and clear. Um, so it's a tremendous it, responsibility, isn't it? Yes, yeah, well, because we pull in, you know, this, this leads me on to our audiences, you know, that we, me and Annabelle try really hard to pull new audiences in um, all the time. And sometimes you, you have audiences coming to see the show that have been directly affected by what you're presenting on stage. You know, like with coal, we had hundreds of coal miners walking through the door. Yeah. Um, who were crying and who were, you know, being political during the show, who were actively demonstrating sometimes because it caused a reaction. Similarly with Wasteland, you know, we've had ex coal miners come and see that and ravers. And so you've got people that have lived through these times and it's a huge responsibility, but then the payoff at the end of all of that hard work, when you see a theater like Nottingham Playhouse packed yeah. with all these well, I, you know, real people, real audiences yeah. um, from areas which you would never think they'd come from. It's a, it's a wonderful, wonderful feeling. Um, and it does really underline though, doesn't it? That if the, if the work is right, then people will come. So people say ridiculous things about audiences and I won't repeat them, but you know, through the years about who does and doesn't engage with live theater or live anything, but actually if it's the right thing, if it's genuinely relevant and interesting and it's, it's reflecting your life experience, then you're going to go and see it. As long as we haven't put barriers in your way, like it's ridiculously expensive or you can't get home after the last bus or whatever. You know, so it's it, it's great. It's a great reminder that the right thing will attract all sorts of different people. Yeah, you know, no, no one can decide who theatre is or isn't for, or dance is or isn't for. Exactly, and I, I think what's been wonderful is to see our audience, my audience, and our audience build. So when we did Curl, when we came back to Nottingham, there were people that had seen Curl that came back and saw Wasteland. Yeah. See those familiar faces and not just Nottingham, but it happened all around the country that we were starting to build up these audiences that were returning. And that felt 
fantastic as a company you know the, to, to feel that we'd got we'd got into these communities and these places and that um they were wanting to see more uh, and seeing their reaction you know it's just absolutely priceless yeah uh, what i do think is interesting is wasteland i mean coal as a title I think you kind of knew what you were getting. And so it was clearly going to be about a certain subject matter and particularly somewhere like Nottingham and Nottinghamshire, where that is still very much current, you know, those feelings and the impact of that, you can still see it, as you know, you went out and about and some of those ex mining villages, they have never recovered. But Wasteland, to be absolutely honest with you, I thought it sounded like a great idea, but I wasn't really sure if it was going to fly because that to me felt much less obvious. And yet we still got, really massive audiences we still got people coming from areas of a so-called least engagement if you like to wasteland now why do you think that is is that their relationship to the company is it the, an understanding of that world that perhaps middle class programmers wouldn't really understand mm -hmm. um i think i i think it's a bit of both i think um what i think gary clark company and nottingham playhouse in particular are good at is collaborating i think we always try and work with the venue that's really important for us. You know, we provide great, Annabelle and the team provide great um, packs for them to work with. So we really try and get the venue on board, not just about the show, but the whole outreach element, which for us is 50% is of the work, you know, going out and meeting these communities and engaging with them before the show arrives, you know, and we, we're, we're unlike any other dance company in that we spend a long time in that area before each show because of our community lead up time and our tech time. We, you know, we've got, um, it's big, our activity is bigger. Um, so we do a lot of work with the venue about how to attract people to the theatre. Um, and we work really hard at our language, how we talk about it, how we write about it, our images the photographic images that we use for press and for brochures, our copy, um, our logos, our branding, all of that, you know, that takes, for us, it's a, it takes a long time to get that right and get the language right to make it sound uh, like people would want to come and see it. So yes, I agree that Wasteland, it felt slightly harder than, we, uh, than coal. And we all knew that naturally because yeah. Coal is a, you know, the call, the minor strike. It was coming up to the 30th anniversary. It's a worldwide subject matter that everyone connects with and the communities are still there. But I can't keep doing coal. I've got, you know, there's got to, there's got to be something else. Yeah. So for me, Wasteland was an attempt at still trying to keep hold of our, our coal audience and our coal communities, but moving it on slightly. So the remnants are still there. Um, but then it moves into a whole different sphere. And just by you know wasteland that sphere is into the rave culture which you couldn't get any more further away and i was really excited about that about what do we do when we smash these two generations together and what was brilliant in london we had a fantastic moment where there was a lady she must have been in her 80s you know with a little walking stick sat in the audience and next to her was this guy with a big blue bubble coat bleach blonde hair and headphones and you could see that she'd come from the for the coal mining and he'd come for the raving and they were <laughs> in the same room i remember looking at them and going this is fantastic perfect you know, like this, we had a lot of ravers in Nottingham. I don't remember from the post show at all. There were so many people there who've, who've been part of rave culture. I was quite surprised. Quite some, some of our regulars as well. <laughs> Just but why, Stephanie, why do you think, because my work goes down very well in Nottingham and we, you know, Cole, we went back by popular demand. We came back, which yeah. is so unknown for a dance show. I mean, you know, as a chief exec, do you know why it, it works? Well, I think Nottingham's a working class city and that's not even to do with the number of people that live in Nottingham that would identify as working class. I think it just is a working class city. Um, I think Nottingham's quite a maverick city and there's something about what you're doing which is kind of like, no, I'm going to seize this ground. I'm going to do what I think is right. I think that resonates definitely. Nottingham likes its dance, always has. That's great. And I also think Nottingham audiences, they don't care what they're supposed to like or not like. They like it or they don't like it. They respond. Our, our post-show talks in Nottingham are always really you know lively you know people say exactly what they think and that's quite refreshing so yeah I, I kind of get it I'm very pleased it's true obviously because it means we can continue to work together but there is something about Nottingham audiences they're very very direct you know that's a good thing all oh, my phone's ringing sorry oh she's just gonna wait until the phones stop ringing 
but that might lead us very nearly on to the next stage, and it's definitely. Um, Freya, are you going to ask us some questions from the audience? That would be great. Yes, no problem. So, yeah, we've had a few different questions in. So, um, Samantha Bosworth, um, she was talking about how both wasteland and coal are really beautiful pieces to process events. And um, have you ever thought about creating a piece on the pandemic or something like that? <sighs> it's a, well, it's funny you should say this because um, I have just been commissioned to make a small dance film by the Lawrence Batley Theatre, who are doing a brilliant, um, yeah, they're doing, a, they're doing a great series called uh, Locked In, Locked Down, But Living, which they've commissioned three um, companies and artists to make work as a response to the pandemic. So it's quite exciting. I'm just about to go into that process. So that, that will be coming. I've got no idea what angle that will take or how I'm going to approach it. I think it's always really hard when you're in the middle of something to create a response. It is for me anyway. So I just need to sit and just allow everything that's happened to manifest itself. But I'm really looking forward to that. Um, and who, who knows, you know, sometime in the future, it might raise its head again. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the Lawrence Batley Theatre um, Commission, I'm really looking forward to just to see, yeah, to see what, what comes out of it. Yeah, definitely. That sounds amazing. Um, and we've had another question here as well, and um, it's kind of looking at your future work and um, mentions that in a question and answer session after in Wasteland in Nottingham, um, that you spoke about future projects, Section 28. And um, is this something that you're still working on or...? Uh, it is, and actually it's, it's at the very end of my long notes here. So what we are going to do is at the end of the session, we're going to talk about Section 28. So that is in the pipeline, so stay tuned. Yeah. Um, and then we've had another question here about reaching real audiences. So, you know, how can we reach more young people and, you know, collaborate with schools and teachers to, to bring this sort of dance and these performances into those um, audiences as well? Oh, um, well, I guess something that we do as a company is we, we work quite um, heavily with our education strands. So we've got someone called Laura who works brilliantly with us and we pull together um, quite a, um, a diverse range of activity um, that can be rolled out on many different educational settings. What we try and do is create bespoke workshops so we don't just give a one-off uh, template and say this is it. Um, we, we very much work with um, each individual school and its teachers and its students and we tailor make um, workshops to fit that particular group and that's proven to be really successful and it's just something I learned as a, I've been working as a professional dancer with other companies and that's always a real refreshing way and it's always a really good way in. I'm really aware that dance um, in particular is becoming less and less in schools um, which I think is a, it's a real problem because I don't know, the government doesn't seem to see it as keeping fit. I think they just see it as something you do on a Friday night with a bottle of champagne after, yeah. after a cabinet meeting. I don't know, but there's just something about, they've still not understood that dance is a physical activity. Um, so I think there's a lot of work to be done there um, in terms of getting more dance into schools. Uh, but pick up the phone. We always phone people the old fashioned way and make contact, you know, um, we do tend to get a lot of good responses from our education work uh, because we are personable and we speak to people. Um, yeah. So I think it's just about keep knocking on people's doors and being flexible and without selling yourself too short, being cheap enough, you know, like schools um, and, and places of education don't have any money like they used to for arts provision and arts activities. So I know that as we as a company, we try to be as flexible as we can with our charging or what we're offering, um, just as a way of getting getting more activity out there into all these communities. Yeah, and we've had a really lovely comment as well from um, Lynn, who said that your strategy to engage the community worked in Doncaster. My daughter did a workshop at school, attended Coal at Cast, and her thrill for the project was contagious. So that's really lovely. So that's really nice to hear as well. So that's really, oh. I think. <laughs> Um, we've got a few more questions, but I think they're more to do with GCC digital, so we can come back to them. Yeah. Thank you, Freya. Okay, section three. So now we're going to talk about community engagement. And I think in a minute we're going to have a little clip of uh, some footage, aren't we? 
and then we're going to bring back our special guests. But, but Gary, just to kick us off on this area, uh, tell us about working with communities. Tell us how it feeds the creative process. Tell us how it works for you. Um, I think I've covered quite a lot of it already, and I'm sure people listening in have heard me before talk about it. But um, yeah, I'm from a community, you know, and I uh, it's very much part of what I do. Um, and what do we mean by community? There's all of those questions which we'll not discuss tonight because that's for another Q&A. Um, but I guess in terms of my work, what we mean by communities is I'm really interested in working in many different local areas and creating smaller com smaller communities within our company that then create a bigger community and it's about bringing people together that might have ne not necessarily accessed anything like what we do before and to provide opportunities for people to come into the uh, production um, have a fantastic creative experience with a brilliant group of people like my company um, and then be able to perform a piece of work that feels relevant uh, and to walk away with a sense of achievement and a sense of learning. So that feels really important for me. Um, we talk a lot about art changing lives, but I really truly believe it and I truly believe in the power of it. And what we've done with our community work with Coal and Wasteland is, has proven just that. You know, there's been some amazing stories that have come out of, of Coal and Wasteland that has got nothing to do with the show or got nothing to do with dance but just about confidence building or about getting over a certain personal issue um, or that it might propel them on to take up a different path in life. You know, like the, the stories have been really inspiring. Um, and I think for me with Cole, it was an experiment. And I started off with four lasses from Donny, from Doncaster, mm. who'd never been on stage before. They were a group of cleaners. Um, and we, it was an experiment and they were from a coal mining village and, I said, look, let's just give it a go. Let's just see if this works. I have a passion for it. And, uh, and lo and behold, that, that really, it, it, it created this amazing opening for all these amazing women and brass players to, to be involved. So yeah, it was, you know, I haven't got words for it. It was, it was mm. phenomenal. And as a team, we worked really hard to make sure that we create these opportunities. And that went through into Wasteland as well. You know, we'd work with groups of women in, in coal um, and we wanted to carry that through into Wasteland and work with groups of men. But this time they would sing. They would play the role of, of ex-coal miners. Um, so those are the two kind of overarching elements of, of our community work. And then we've got the brass band players as well, which is a whole other element that we brought into the work. Uh, many brass bands and not colliery bands in particular are not uh, used to working with contemporary dance, live mm -hmm. dance on stage. So for them, it was a whole new experience. Um, they're not used to being seen, they're used to being heard. And so suddenly they were very much a visual part of the show. Um, and we build fantastic relationships with these, with these groups of people. And I guess in a way, it, it goes past just Gary Clark Company. You know, I've been doing this for many years now as just an independent practitioner. I'm really passionate about communities. I do a, I've done a lot of work with the LGBTQ communities. I've done work with um, ex-drug addicts. I've done set, uh, projects with the homeless. Um, so for me, community goes much wider. It, it kind of spreads across all parts of my work. Um, and I'm, yeah, I'm very passionate about it. And uh, Freya, are we going to see some footage of the pit men and pit women? Am I right? Fabulous. Oh, yeah. Technology, eh? Oh, you have some sound, Freya. They just have a click around on that one. I recognise half those. We people. are the women, we are strong. We are fighting for our lives side by side with our men who were the nation's minds. United by struggle, united by the past. And this, here we go, here we go. For the women of the working class. So the way that Wasteland um, involves and works with communities is very, very similar to what we did with Co. And so we had an idea that we would try and connect with uh, local men this time. So we go on a quest all around the country where we, we ask for local men to step forward, for local 
either coal mining communities or working class communities, and that have a passion for singing. I really enjoy working with the pitmen at um, all the venues because they're just such a fresh energy that come in. Um, a lot of them have never been on stage before, a lot of them have like, really different backgrounds. Also, meeting the pitmen, hearing that some people went through a similar thing that my character went through, uh, that also, it just kind of fuels more information in my head that I can use for my own personal journey. Fantastic. Thank you for that. And now we're going to be joined by um, two of the community choruses from Nottingham's productions of Coal and Wasteland. So I'd like to welcome Catherine and Roger. Hello um, again. Hello. How are you? Um, I'm just going to give Gary a bit of a chance to rest. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, so, um, Catherine, can I start with you? I just, we're just really interested to know what it was like being involved in the productions, really. Just start off with a big question. Oh, yeah, it is a big question. Um, it was, I don't really want to say it when Gary's listening, to be honest, because his head will just get so big, but it was an, an absolutely phenomenal uh, experience um, and an absolute privilege. And as he said, it's been life-changing uh, for, for each and every one of us in different ways. Um, and I can tell you a little bit about how it changed my life but um, the whole process as you can see from everything that, that Gary said he's um, he's about truth and honesty and there is not uh, you know a, a flaky bone in his body so um, the four uh, women that turned up to this workshop um, to you know find out what this experience was all about um, we didn't know each other we didn't know what to expect uh we sort of went in met gary and, and uh tc and within the first 10 minutes um you know they'd sort of given us told us a bit about their lives asked us to share a little bit about ours and already you know we probably knew more about each other in that first 10 minutes than you might know about people that you've known for years but actually only on on speaking terms so we very quick, quickly realized that this was something um, you know, quite unusual happening here. Um, and then we would, we'd sort of did a little bit of singing, a little bit of movement and so on. Um, but then at the end, um, they got us to do the walk forward to the rope, which is part of coal. And it, and it literally is walking forward, like it wasn't expecting us to do an arabesque or anything dramatic. It mm. was walking forward, but it was to the sound of a brass band playing. And by the time we got to that rope, we were all in tears. And this was, this was a workshop that, you know, we'd met these people an hour and a half before, but they had somehow tapped into um, the emotions of all of us, I think. Um, and say we come from different places, the, the four women that, that were there that night, we were then joined by two others when we actually did the, the uh, second round of coal. Um, and we all come from different backgrounds and there was you know, one in their 30s, one in their 40s, one in their 50s, one in their 60s from the four from that night. Um, but something resonated in it. So I personally didn't have any connection to mining, um, but I remember the miners' strike because I was a student at the time um, uh, in Manchester. And, um, you know, I, I remember the marches and, and the protests and... And the, and the fury at um, Thatcher, just give away my political leanings there. Um, <laughs> and, and all of that had actually been buried for a while. And, but Gary asked us about it and suddenly, you know, it came out this anger that had been buried for 30 years. Um, so that was sort of quite revelatory. Um, and then I was born in Belfast and, you know, my, my family were working class. My dad left school at 14 um, and my granddad worked in the docks and, um, so although it's not the same, there's a sort of a, rec a recognition there. And I, and I think that's true probably of, of everyone involved that whilst there may not have been a direct connection, there was so much that you could recognise and understand and, and connect to. Um, so yeah, I mean, there you go. I've spoken for five minutes just about the workshop. <laughs> yeah, the, um, the actual uh, process was was phenomenal. It was very intense. It was over you know, a few days, um, and I think the thing that was uh, surprising, really surprising about it, was sort of we perhaps expected the professionalism from from Gary and TC, and um, but the the young men that we were dancing with, um, they they genuinely treated us as equals. 
Now, clearly, we are not there equal in dance terms mm -hmm. by any stretch of the imagination. But you know, there's a section of dance where, where we, which we individually had to choreograph with our you know, pit husband. Um, and they asked us, well, what, what do you think we should do? You know, what would you feel comfortable doing? And so we were able to contribute to the process. And you know, that, that is just astonishing because we you know, I think we all assumed we'd just be told, you go here, put your left foot <laughs> in, your right arm out, whatever. Um, but we contributed to it and that was hugely empowering. Um, to be able to to take part in that and of course the story of coal itself is so uh, emotional yeah. um, and and affecting um, that actually to be able to be part of that performance um, was was just a phenomenal privilege um, especially with my pit husband PJ who all 14 stone of him uh, insisted on completely collapsing, like genuinely collapsing. We're thinking, no, but he's, he's going to help us, really. No, just collapsed. <laughs> mm. So the, oh, you know, the effort on your face to try and get him off the floor was genuine. Um, yeah, so it was, it was a phenomenal um, experience and, and something I will, will never forget. And just quickly before I hand over to Roger and ask him some questions, are you still in touch with your other pit women? Yes, yeah, absolutely. We've got a WhatsApp group. In fact, there's a few of them on there making comments um, <laughs> at the moment. Um, we're in touch with each other, um, you know, weekly, daily. Uh, one of Wonderful. them's in Cornwall at the moment. Um, so, yeah. Oh, how lucky. <laughs> Thanks so much, Catherine. I'm sure some of the audience will have questions for you in a second. Um, Roger, can I come over to you now? Obviously, we didn't make you dance to the same extent. <laughs> but how, did you, how did you find it? What's, what did it mean to you to be involved in performing on stage? Uh, Catherine talked about the intensity of the experience and that's absolutely right. It, it's four days from the first time you meet people to when the kind of final curtain goes down. So it's, a, it's an incredibly intense experience. I suppose for, for me at uh, my advanced age, there's something about uh, new dogs, uh, old dogs learning new tricks really. And there was a kind of almost of an out of body experience for me at one point because I'm sat on one of the chairs waiting to do what I have to do and I'm thinking to myself I'm on stage with members of the Grimethorpe Colliery Brass Band and some of the best young dancers in Europe and I'm thinking what am I doing here you know <laughs> and, and it was just a, it, it was an extraordinary experience and it's really down to um, two things I think that I was there I, I, I wouldn't have auditioned for Wasteland if I hadn't done Quorum Boy, which was a major Nottingham Playhouse production, uh, community based at, at, at the Albert Hall. And I wouldn't have had the confidence to audition for Wasteland if I hadn't been involved in Quorum Boy at the Albert Hall. And there's a little bit of me that's always wanted to be on that Nottingham Playhouse stage. And I never thought uh, that I would ever get there. And my best friend, who might actually be watching, was part of the Playhouse company in the 1970s. Oh. And, 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 I, and I was, I've always thought to myself, I'm in awe of him doing that. It's something I could never, ever do. But Gary's belief that we've got a system that works, yes, you can do that, helped me deal with the fear, with the feelings of flight I had at several points, you know, when I thought, oh, you know, I can't do this, I can't do this. And uh, Gary made me believe. Fantastic. One of your pit men at the Playhouse was actually our, um, one of our trustees, Andy. Andy, yeah. Chair of our risk group. But he's not on the call at the moment, but so I, I can say I can be more honest about how much money we have or haven't got, <laughs> which is good. <laughs> um, so, so, Roger, one last thing is, are you in touch with your other pit men or did you know them already? And are these, have you continued to perform since Wasteland or are we remiss in offering you other opportunities at the moment? Uh, well, I was involved in the uh, video that uh, Gary talked about with the other pit men and that, that was good fun. It was nice to revisit it. And during lockdown, when by definition you can't get out much, uh, it was uh, really good you know, to, to, to be involved in that. So credit to the Gary Clark company for that. <clears throat> I already knew 
uh, two of the Nottingham pitmen because they pit men because they'd been involved in Corum Boy, and I met some more pitmen when I went over to the Derby production because uh, it seemed to me that this is a really good production. I think I should go and see it because because <laughs> when, when you're involved in it, you don't get to see it from the front, do you? So I went over to Derby, met Gary again and Ali and the, some of the cast members, but also some of the other pitmen, which was nice. And one lovely little touch for the pitmen is when we were being put in our costumes, <coughs> we had to wear these kind of slightly shabby jackets. Uh, and in the pocket of the jacket was a, a lovely little note from the Canterbury pitmen to the Nottingham pitmen, good luck. And that, of course, was something that we continued. So when we parted company with our jackets, we put little notes in the uh, pockets to the guys that were doing it. I thought, well, did he go to Blackpool next summer up in the Northwest anyway? And that, that was a nice touch. So uh, yes, I'm still in touch with some of the pit men. And we've got the pit men Facebook group, you know, which is uh, still a going concern. Brilliant. Thank you so much. And Freya, are there questions? Have we got other pit men and women in the audience? I'm pretty sure we do, but I don't know if there's questions from them or questions from other people for our community participants. So we do have um, pit men and women in the audience. We've got a message from Kathy Robinson just to say lots of love to Catherine and um, from her pit sisters. So that was really lovely. Um, and I suppose we haven't had any direct questions, but just a question from me um, would just be, is there anything, any kind of skill or something that you really learn um, be, as being part of the production that has kind of helped you in any other way that you took from it? Do I go first, Roger? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I think the main thing for me was it was it was sort of a catalyst. Um, it it made me feel like Superwoman, <laughs> and like um, I should just go out there and um, try everything that I'd always wanted to try. But sort of thought, oh, I can't, I can't possibly. I have you know, I haven't got the time. I haven't got, the, haven't got the confidence. Um, and so now, uh, well, before. Uh, lockdown my whole social life entirely revolves and some professional life revolves around the theatre so I um, I, I d directed a show for the first time um, following Cole because I just thought why not give that a go um, I became a theatre reviewer for East Midlands Theatre um, because I love going to theatre why would I not want to go and see more and write about it um, and then last year I trained as a, a theatre captioner um, so now I can be professionally uh, employed at theatre so it, it's mm -hmm. brought me back to what I loved as a teenager and sort of lost contact with through the boring humdrum of life um, um, and it's yeah it was a real catalyst to just change my life entirely. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess it's too late to change my life entirely but I did <laughs> it's gonna get, get, get me getting on a bit but you know there was a cheesy advertising slogan a few years ago it said when was the last time you did something for the first time and you know and uh, and there'll be more first times as a result of this because what the experience gave me was the kind of confidence to try different things and, and new things and I'm a member of uh, Nottingham Playhouse Choir now and that's kept going sort of digitally you know which is uh, nice you know so, so 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 that that stays with me and i walked past the playhouse uh, the other day and it's so sad to see it closed down it's not a vibrant living building right at the moment but i i i, I feel a kind of sense of a bit of a, a bit of a jargon word isn't it ownership of nottingham playhouse now in in a way that i never did before you know and i'm looking forward to further opportunities to to, to stay involved and get involved yeah and how, how do you feel that community is now important, um, especially, especially moving past COVID and the time that we're in now? How do you feel that community has got, you know, how important it is now in theatre? I hope the community will really kind of sort of, well, the community will want to get out more. And I do hope that when the uh, Playhouse reopens, we get new people in there. One of the byproducts of being involved in Wasteland uh, was that uh, my, my, my son came to see it because he said, what, Jimmy Courty of the KLF did some of the soundtrack? I'm coming to that. And he would never have come to that production, I don't think, but for the fact that I was in it, it was a Jimmy Courty thing. And several people that I know said, look, I don't come to contemporary dance. It's not a thing that I do. But I came to see this and it was wonderful. Yeah. You know? and, uh, yeah. and that's important because of the community engagement you know, brings in the kind of new audience that I know Gary and I know Stephanie want to see. Yeah. 
more so more so now than ever i think you know moving forward i think in terms of creative communities i think we're going to be you know we're going to pull together i think people are now moving into the next phase of whatever covid and lockdown is so um yeah we've got, we've got a little question there at the bottom to roger and catherine uh, what was your favorite part of working with gcc and uh I, I, and it's for me it was just simply being fully accepted by the by, by, by the crew uh, the dancers by gary by the people that led the proceedings you know this this emphatically was not an exercise in just ticking a box well we've got these four community dudes in you know we've done that we've done that we are, we're as Catherine, i think said, Catherine said earlier on we felt like equals we felt like we belonged and that we were part of it and uh, that was it and looking back um it was <laughs> Uh, singing on that stage was one point where I had to sing a couple of lines solo before the other pitmen came in and immediately before I sang there was a heckle from the audience and I thought oh you know that could throw me off my stride but uh, but it, it didn't I did it you know uh, and it was, it was just, just just great amazing that's so I think that's all of the questions that we've had um for Catherine and Roger, um, I don't know if you would like to move on to the next. Okay, thank you. What about Catherine's favourite bit? Yeah, so what's Catherine's favourite bit? <laughs> uh, I, I mean, I think I think it's the same, and I think it, it's that um, acceptance, and I, I think the proof of the pudding is in the fact that we are still part of that family. You know, that wasn't wasn't pretend. It didn't just happen for those few days. Uh, we're still there. Um, some of us went up to Glasgow to see um, Cole again because we wanted to see all the guys. We wanted to see our other pit women. We wanted to see them performing it. So um, that, that family will continue, um, however. Yeah. Always. It, it yeah. will never stop. And I think that's something as a company we celebrate is that we will always keep growing. Like when we talk about community, it's not just what's on stage it's actually everything else surrounding it. So you are, you both, like all of our other pit men, pit, pit sisters and brass band players, you are all part of the company. Um, you're part of the fabric of who we are. Um, and more, may there be more to come, you know. Yeah, fantastic. Thanks ever so much. Lovely to see you both. <laughs> Thanks for joining Pleasure. us and Thank look you. forward to working with you again in the future. Um, so Gary, now we're moving on to the future. Yeah. Um, um looking ahead what's next yeah what's next final final hurdle um so like i said at the very beginning we are taking um a bit of time to reflect stabilize and look into the future i mean as we know every day is different in this current climate things are changing rapidly and we're constantly having to change with it um but I'm working really closely with uh, Annabelle Dunbar, who is in, in touch with all of our theatres that we didn't manage to make um, as part of our spring tour. We've got various conversations with those looking at possibly touring next year, the live show. I'm keeping my fingers crossed and I'm trying to be really positive that live theatre will at some point get back to normal. So Annabelle is in long conversations with each of the theatres. And of course, they're all in different um, situations and, and have different answers. But that's something that we are wanting to pursue later in the future is to try and pick up and finish off what we began yeah. with our Wasteland tour. Um, we're also going to be looking at further developing GCC Digital, which I know a lot of people have been asking about. And we're looking at developing a further five weeks of programme activity, which will roll out once a week, uh, sorry, once a month for five months until January. Um, and it will have a real focus um, and it will be very, very rich in content. Um, in, the fact, in the way that we're going to try to move past Wasteland and look at my... Um, repertoire in a bigger sense. Mm. Uh, so one week might focus on Cole, another week might focus on some of my previous work like Two Men and a Michael and Horsemeat. You know, I've got a whole bag of, of repertoire that I think could create brilliant content for digital. So that's something that me and the team are really pulling together. So people that are interested, you can still find information on the uh, Wasteland website. The, the, there will be a GCC digital page uh, on there, but we are looking at kind of creating a bigger platform uh, for that. And I'm also going to be looking at different platforms like Zoom for, for an example of how we can have a further reach. 
so yeah, we, we're really focusing on that. We're focusing on establishing um, ourselves as a more solid company. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the, the bigger aim is to become, uh, you know, more regularly funded and have a, a more robust and steady um, infrastructure. So that, that's something we're going to be looking at, meaning we could do a lot more projects throughout the year. Yeah. Um, I'm also interested in this whole, this whole move into digital land. Um, and it's been a, a passion of mine for quite a while and something that I've never really followed through with. But I want to make a film version of Cole. Oh, wow. Okay. It would be an amazing film. It would be an amazing dance film. And it would also act as a piece of documentary and to maybe get all of our pit men and pit women and our brass band players involved in that film and for it to be on location. Uh, so it's not a stage version, but we actually go out and we film sections in working men's clubs and underground. That'd be amazing. Come and do something in Nottingham. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's a massive potential here and to maybe interview some ex-coal miners, which then would be intersliced with some of the movement sections. And we think that that could really add to that legacy and it could act as a document. It could then travel to all the different mining museums and schools. So, yeah, again, another good thing that's come out of, of COVID is thinking about how I can translate my work into a digital format. And I think Call the Film would be something of good value, I think. Um, and I guess the another main thing, which I can now finally say publicly, which I've not really done as yet, is I'm going to be creating a third piece, a trilogy, to Coal and Wasteland, and that will uh, look at section 28. Mm-hmm. Um, so another political piece, but this time looking at the LGBTQ plus communities. Um, those of you who don't know about Section 28, just Google it. I'm not going to go into it too much tonight. But, too angry. Um, but again, it's just it's another situation where a, a, another community was affected um, by society, uh, and, a, and a community that you know I'm very you know connected with as a as an openly gay man, the gay community. So Section 28 will look at that landscape, and the idea is is to continue our relationship with our community cast and to try and work with various different LGBTQ plus uh, forums around the country and uh, get testimonials and stories from that community all to add in um, and then be a part of that process. And as part of our next phase is that we're also looking at creating a photography exhibition which will go alongside the tour. So we're in the very beginning stages of that, which will be called 50 Portraits. So lots on the horizon. So yes, section 28 will hopefully be the third piece of what I'm what I'm thinking of is the trilogy. Um, And at the minute that's a that's a production for stage, but of course we're gonna have to shape shift around whatever happens in the near future with venues. Yeah. And when do you when are you planning for section 28 to be completed? It's began, it started already. So in my mind, it takes a while for things to get going. So um, I think we're going to do some initial research um, this year, just to start to pull together what, what it is the, uh, the production is trying to achieve, um, what the community element will be, um, and what the 50 Portraits project will be as well. Because I almost want that to be a project by itself. I want to somehow document our research in ways that I've never done before. So that, that'll be a kind of mini project that I'll sit alongside. Um, so in a few years from now, you know, but we'll talk to you then about commissioning the next Please. one. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You can Definitely do all three. Yeah, and, and the exhibition as well. Yeah, I think that's what's exciting for us as well is we've built up now a fantastic relationship with, you know, not just Nottingham Piles, but yeah. fantastic theatres all around the country who've had Coal, Wasteland and Want Section 28. So that, you know, that for, for us that feels a real, um, something very celebratory is to be able to continue these relationships. Fantastic. We're kind of running out of time, Gary. We kind of run out of time, really. But um, should we just see if there's any more questions from, from the audience, Freya? Yes, yes. So um, we've had a few different questions come through and um, one of them, obviously, people are very happy to hear about the cold film. That sounds like an amazing, amazing opportunity. Um, We've had a question come through and basically Wasteland was incredible and encouraged me to speak to my dad about coal mining, his coal mining job and do further research into rave culture. Um, I'm a 15 year old dancer from Derbyshire. How can I get involved in your work? 
Oh, wow. Well, first of all, that's amazing. And thank you so much. Like, I'm so glad that my work inspires you to go and find out more about people and society and history. That's exactly what, why I do this. So that's, that's wonderful. How can you get involved with our work? Keep in touch. We have a website. Um, join in on GCC Digital. Drop us a line. Look out for performances. Um, you know, we've got a Facebook page. We've got Instagram. Please keep involved. We are having a bit of a quiet time in terms of our live activity for various reasons. Um, but our digital platform will be coming back. So stay in touch with there. And it's fair to say, if we're out and about, you know, come and see our shows, come and introduce yourself. Um, you know, we sometimes provide opportunities for you to come and do class or take part in question and answer sessions. So just stay in touch. Just keep up to date with what we're doing and, you know, keep being involved in things like this. That's how you get involved. And hopefully I'll get to meet you one day face to face. <laughs> Whenever that will be, I don't know. Um, <laughs> But yeah, and, and thank you again for your words. It's really inspiring. Yeah, really, really lovely. And um, we've had another question here as well. Um, just to say, um, would you ever consider re-performing Coal or Wasteland at any point? Is there anything you'd look back to? Yes, that's the bigger plan is because Coal was a hit and I put the brakes on Coal, not Annabelle or not theatres, it was me. I said, I need to move on. But the idea of is to bring Cole back. Um, the bigger dream would to be br to bring all three back as a big trilogy. So Cole, Wasteland, Section Twenty Eight. That would be that would be me, and then I'll retire. Um, <laughs> that is the bigger picture, and I, you know I think Cole has got a big. It's got huge potential. So somewhere down the line, and it is in our planning that I would love to bring Cole back because I think people would still come and see it, um, and I think theatres would have it back. So. Um, yes, I shall be bringing it back, all being where mm -hmm. theatres are open and want it. Yeah, we've had some really, really lovely comments, both about Cole and Wasteland. Um, Lisa Chamberlain, Cole completely changed my life. I'll never be able to thank Gary enough. Anna Wells, Wasteland was one of my favourite theatre, theatrical dance performances. So touching, exhilarating and informative, um, which is all really, really lovely comments that everyone's putting here. And um, just a couple of comments as well about GCC Digital. And I thought this was a really interesting question from Kathy Robinson, just saying that you're obviously a very sociable person and did GCC Digital help you on a personal level um, during lockdown? Yes, well, it gave me focus. <laughs> I think it gave a lot. It gave a lot of us focus, and I think, um, you know, we were very, uh, we felt lucky that we we had the resources to keep our company together to be able to do that. So it really, yes, it helped us. I think massively mentally, it gave us something to focus on, and again, it gave us, um, it gave us a responsibility, you know, to to add to the situation. So. Um, it was only a good thing, you know, only good things came from GCC Digital, both for us as a company helping to keep us together and provide, you know, we have a responsibility and for the people that engaged with, with our programme, um, it was a two way thing and that's why we want to continue doing it. Um, so yeah, it helped us in many, many positive ways. Yeah. Um... That's all of the questions from my, I'm just checking. Um, but yeah, just so many people just saying, you know, amazing um, about all of the performances and inspired by this, Lynn Matthews, Mathers, um, very, very inspired by this conversation this evening. And that's been, it's been an absolute pleasure. Um, so it's really lovely to see everyone's comments. Phil Lowe just wants to say Cole's a thrilling to review. <laughs> wow, amazing. There's also something about one last thing, but there's some just to wrap this up, you know, the whole conversation is about creative communities in the future. And I think, okay. you know, we've both, for, you know, as artists and programmers and theatre directors, you know, we've got, we've got to keep pushing forward, which we are doing. And I know it's hard for us, but you know, art will live on <laughs> and, and to stay positive. Um, you know, I think we, ha we have a future. We've just got to keep making it work, I think. Absolutely. 
Okay, I think we need to wrap up really. Um, can I just thank everyone for joining us, all the, all the brilliant questions, that's been really inspiring. And um, thanks so much Catherine and Roger for joining us and I can't wait to see you back at Nottingham Playhouse. Um, thanks for organising everything Freya, that's fabulous. And finally Gary, it's been absolutely lovely chatting with you again as always, um, really inspiring. I think we just can't wait to be back in a theatre experiencing Gary Clark Company live as it's meant to be. Um, and uh, can't be too long surely till that happens thanks so much and thank you stephanie for hosting this it's been brilliant thank you great to see you all yeah, thank okay. you.